Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Travel Journal with me. Today, I'll be sharing our family journey through the beautiful city of Lisbon, Portugal. This is part of our 16-day group tour across Spain, Morocco, and Portugal. I'll be showing snippets from our trip, then I will attempt to document our adventure into my scrapbook travel journal. Let's dive in. Before we proceed to our next destination, let's journal about day 12. I'm using this Traveler's Notebook in Camel by the Traveler's Company. I love this leather cover because it's durable and it protects my inserts from the wear and tear. There are only a few pages left in this insert, which contains day 1 to 12 of our trip to Spain and Morocco. So I've decided to start a new insert for Portugal. This new insert has no specific brand, but it is also unruled, giving me the freedom to create without restrictions. If you'll notice, the covers are still plain and have no decorations yet. This is because I usually decorate my covers after filling up the insert. This approach allows me to choose a design that should reflect the overall theme and experience captured within the journal. It's like creating a visual summary of the entire trip once all the memories are documented inside. Starting a new insert for Portugal and the remaining days of our trip also helps me mentally separate this leg of the journey, giving it its own space to unfold on the pages. Now let me show you the supplies I'll be using for this journal. I have chosen items that are not only functional but also reflect the essence of our trip to Lisbon. First, I'll use these large alphabet stamps to stamp Lisbon on the leftmost part of the spread as a starting point. 
This acts as an anchor for the entire layout and immediately sets the context for the page. Just a tip, I like placing a pencil board underneath the page before stamping for an even surface. This ensures a more clean and crisp stamp impression. Next, I'll use this page from a travel brochure featuring a map of Portugal and a tram. I'll cut out the image of the map and tram along with the words picturesque Portugal. Including elements like this adds authenticity to the journal and serves as a visual reminder of the places we visited. Now I'm playing around with these elements along with the photos from that day. I take my time arranging everything because it's my form of mindfulness. This process allows me to slow down and relive the day's experiences and decide which moments I want to highlight. It's not just about creating a pretty page, it's about telling our travel story visually. Once I'm satisfied with the layout, it's time to glue it down. I prefer using a glue stick for ephemera like brochure cutouts and double-sided tape for photos and thicker papers. This ensures everything stays securely in place even with frequent handling of the journal. I'll be adding these photos of the sardine cans display from the fantastic world of Portuguese sardine store and our family photo as a tip-in for more writing space. Tip-ins are great because they allow you to include more content without bulking up your journal too much. Plus, they create an interactive element that makes flipping through the journal more engaging. For decorative accents, I'm adding a strip of tape with the European tile design. If you've watched my previous travel journal videos from Spain and Morocco, you may have noticed that I've used this thicker booklet with European tile design before because I'm aiming for consistency across my journal pages. This visual continuity helps tie the entire trip together even as we move from one country to another. Next, I'm adding this sticker strip with a map design at the bottom of the spread. Maps are a recurring theme in my travel journals because they reinforce the journey aspect of our trip. Then, I'll shade the word Lisbon using a dark green colored pencil because it complements the other colors we've used on the spread, such as deep red, deep yellow, brown, and violet. Color coordination is key in creating a cohesive and visually pleasing layout. For more decorative accents, I'm adding these stamp images for the weather to note the day number and some travel notes. These small details help capture the full experience of the day and make the journal more informative when we look back on it later.
For writing snippets about the day's adventure, let's add the date using a ruler date stamp. Dates are crucial in a travel journal because they help us remember exactly when each experience occurred. My favorite way of documenting is in chronological order because it's easier to relieve the trip when I look back at the journal later. It reflects the natural way we experience travel one day at a time, one moment after another. This approach also helps capture the authentic rhythm of our journey. Next, I'll be using this vintage Sharasa brown pen for writing. The brown ink adds a warm of vintage feel to the page that matches the overall aesthetic I'm going for. With this green click art marker, I'm underlining the names of the sites we visited for emphasis. This makes it easy to quickly identify the key places we saw when skimming through the journal. Now let's take a look at our finished spread for day 12. Each element of this page serves a purpose, whether it's providing information, evoking a memory, or simply adding to the overall visual appeal. Now let's move on to day 13.
the document day 13, I'd like to add this brochure page of the monument to the discoveries. The image will occupy the whole spread of our insert. This serves as a striking visual anchor for the day's memories and immediately sets the context for our Lisbon exploration. To cover the text found at the bottom right of the brochure page, I'll add this photo of the map on the ground beside the monument. In this photo, our tour guide was explaining to us the routes taken by explorers during the 15th and 16th centuries. Next, let's move on to the next empty spread. I'd like to use this vintage design tissue paper to decorate the spread. I'm tearing the paper in half to glue it into the upper right and lower left corners of our spread. This creates a subtle background texture and adds a vintage feel that complements the historical nature of our visit. Next, I'll be adding this business card from the hotel where we stayed in Lisbon. I'll also add photos of the Belém Tower and Monument of Discoveries along with the large circle sticker with a European tiled pattern. These elements create a visual summary of our day's main sites. Now I'm adding more square stickers for additional decorative accents. Next, I'm fussy cutting my photo in front of a van that has the words You Will Never Forget Lisbon printed on it. This personal photo adds a fun, candid element to the spread and reinforces the memorable nature of our trip. For more decorative accent, I'm stamping this clear stamp with the words Tourist Mode using a black chalk ink on our left page to complement the blue color of the van on our right page. This playful addition ties the two pages together visually. Now, just like in our first spread, I'm adding the smaller elements like this DIY stickers of the weather and day number. If you'll notice, in creating my layouts, it's easier for me to put down the bigger elements first, like the photos and large images in ephemera. Then, the little elements like washi tapes and small stamps and stickers last. This approach allows me to establish the main structure of the spread before fine-tuning with smaller details. It's like building up puzzles, starting with the big pieces and then filling in the gaps. The journaling part would come as the final step of the process. This allows me to see the visual story I've created and then add written details to complement and expand on the images and ephemera. Now let's take a look at our finished spread. This layout not only documents our day but also captures the essence of our Lisbon experience through a mix of official tourist information, personal photos, and decorative elements that reflect the city's character. For our next spread, I'll be adding this brochure page featuring an image of Paste de Belém, a famous Portuguese street, along with the text Treasures of Portugal. This serves as a perfect introduction to the culinary aspect of our trip. 
Alongside this, I'll place these photos of me in front of Museo de Marina and the custard tart our guide gave us. This combination of brochure material and personal photos create a nice balance between the expected tourist experience and our actual memories. add more decorative accent, I'll be adding this sticker strip with the tile design from the sticker booklet. This continues the theme of Portuguese tiles we've been using throughout the journal, maintaining a visual consistency and reflecting the local architecture we've seen. Moving on to our next empty spread, I'll be documenting our launch and our visit to Sintra National Palace. I always like to start with the photos first as they form the core of my visual narrative. I'll be adding the photos of the food we ate and some images from inside Sintra Palace. This allows me to see much space I have left for additional elements and journaling. Next, I'll be adding this large label sticker with the European tile design. Since the label sticker is too large, I'll be cutting it into half to place at the bottom center and top center of our spread. Adding more accents with this vintage design washi tape further enhances the old world feel that matches the historical nature of Sintra Palace. Next, I'll be writing the name of the restaurant and the palace on top of this vintage line cardstock paper with a red marker for emphasis. Using a different color and style for these titles help them stand out and makes it easier to quickly identify the main topics of the spread when flipping through the journal later. Then, using the same brown pen as before, I'll write a short description of our restaurant experience and of Sintra. I prefer to keep the same pen for most of my writing to maintain a consistent look throughout the journal. The brown ink also adds to the vintage aesthetic we're aiming. This approach of layering different elements from photos to decorative stickers to handwritten notes allows me to create a rich multidimensional record of our experiences. Each component plays a role in telling the story of our day, from the grand sights we saw to the delicious food we tasted. By maintaining consistent themes and color schemes, the entire journal becomes a cohesive narrative of our journey through Portugal. And there you have it. We've captured the essence of Lisbon in these vintage pages, turning our memories into a tangible keepsake. I hope this journey through my travel journal has sparked your creativity and inspired you to document your own adventures in unique ways. If you're looking for more travel journal inspiration, I've curated a whole travel journal playlist on this channel. 
It's packed with tips and peeks into my journals from other places. I'll put the link of the playlist in the description box below. Now I'm curious, how has keeping a travel journal changed the way you experience your trips? I would love to know your answers in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to join me on future journaling adventures. Your support means the world to me and it helps keep this creative community growing. Thanks for exploring Lisbon with me through the pages of my journal. See you on my next video. Bye!